In this lecture, we're going to look at two types of forces, conservative forces as well as non-conservative forces. So let's begin with the conservative forces. Now let's recall for a second what mechanical energy is. Mechanical energy of a system or an object is simply the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy of our system. For example, to find the mechanical energy, we simply use the following formula. So change in potential plus change in kinetic. Now, a force is said to be conservative if it conserves the mechanical energy of our system. In other words, if a force, a conservative force, acts on our object and it moves it from some point X to another point Y, the mechanical energy, this guy, remains the same. In other words, if our object loses some potential energy, it must gain that amount of kinetic energy so that our total mechanical energy of the system is conserved. Now said another way, if a conservative force moves an object from point X, so from point X to point Y and back to point X, zero work is done. And that's only if a conservative force acts on that object. So if our object moves along this path, in a circular path and back to its initial spot, or it moves in a straight path, or it moves in some curvy path, but it moves back to our initial point. In each case, zero work is done. So for example, let's look at the following system of mass M, and suppose we have three path, uh, paths that we take. Path one, path two, and path three. In each case, our M travels a distance M, or a distance H. Now, when a conservative force acts on object M, and in each case moves this object a distance H over some different path in each case, the pathway taken does not change the energy of our system. It does not change the mechanical energy of that system. Now let's look at the following example that shows us this conservation of mechanical energy. So let's look at the example. Suppose we have two systems. In this system and in this system we both have a mass of one kilogram. So this box and this box are both one kilogram and in each case they begin 10 meters above the ground. So this is our ground. Now in the first case our object is moved by a conservative force 10 meters down to our ground. Likewise, this object slides down our incline with some angle theta, doesn't matter what angle, but it moves down a height of 10 meters. So it ends up at the ground just like this object does. Now I want to calculate what the changes in energy in this situation versus this situation. Now in each case, some conservative force acts. So let's use this formula. The change in our energy is equal to our potential energy of the system plus our kinetic energy of the system. So this is for our case number one. When the object is above the ground, 10 meters above, and in, in each case our object is stationary. So it has no velocity. That means since our velocity is zero, this object has no kinetic energy at this point. So that means all the energy is given by our potential energy. And potential energy is simply our gravitational potential energy. So mass times G times H. Since mass is 1, H is 10, and G is 9.81 meters per second second, our change in energy, or our energy of this system, in these both cases, our amount of energy is 98.1 joules because our kinetic energy is zero. Likewise, what's our energy when the object travels down 10 meters in both cases? Well, in both cases, since a conservative force is acting, what happens? Well, if our height at this point is now zero, that means we have zero potential energy and all that energy is converted into kinetic energy. So now there's 98.1 joules of kinetic energy. So that equals one half times mass, which is one kilogram, times velocity squared. So to find the velocity of both objects at this point and at this point, we simply solve for V and we neglect the negative counterpart and we use the positive velocity and we get 14 meters per second second. So our speed or velocity is approximately 14 meters per second 
not per second second per second uh, at this point and at this point so that shows us that gravity is in fact a conservative force it doesn't matter what path our gravity takes at the, at the end result depends only on the initial condition and the final condition in other words it depends on this height 10 meters. Now other examples of conservative forces exist and those are magnetic forces, electric forces and Hooke's law forces. So the forces in a spring are all conservative forces. So now let's examine non-conservative forces. Now a force is said to be non-conservative if the amount of mechanical energy of the system does not remain constant in changes. In other words, the amount of work done by non-conservative force does in fact depend on the pathway taken by that object or system. For example, suppose our system is this box and suppose that a person is either pushing or pulling on this box and they pull that box from position A to position B along two paths along path 1 and along path 2. Now suppose this box is being pushed and pulled on a surface where friction exists. What will happen to the amount of work done by the person on path 1 versus path 2? Well our displacement in both cases is the same but our distance traveled is not. This path requires a longer distance than this path and that means more work must be done in pushing this box or pulling this box from point A to point B along our path 2 than path 1. So the amount of work done is more in path number 2 than path number 1 and that means two things. The pushing and pulling forces are both non-conservative forces. Likewise, a friction force, kinetic friction, is also non-conservative. So let's look at example number two. Suppose a box is lying on the ground, so its kinetic energy is zero, and its uh, gravitational potential energy is also zero, so its potential energy is zero, because the height is zero and the box has no velocity. And now suppose a person comes and pulls the box onto this ledge, that, that is h distance, a height h above our ground. So that means our box which is now also not moving but now it has potential energy. So that means that our mechanical energy of the system of this box changed, right? It went from zero to some mgh where the m is the mass of the box and that means the mechanical energy was increased because of an increase in potential energy when the box was pulled by a person. Once again, the pulling force or pushing force that the person exerted was in fact a non-conservative force. And other examples involved, so we just spoke about pull and push and we spoke about friction. Air resistance and tension in a rope are also two examples of non-conservative forces.